Greetings, War Thunderers. This is Longshot with you again. Welcome to the third video in my series of beginner guides for War Thunder. This continues from the previous video which introduced the principles of energy fighting. If you have annotations on, you'll now see a link to that video which I recommend watching first if you haven't already done so. Anyway, to begin with, I'm starting with how to climb. This is the most effective method I've found for gaining altitude in arcade. Hold WEP down and keep the plane angled so that it's travelling at a minimum of 250 km an hour, although I find 270 is better. In the periods where WEP is unavailable, drop the nose just enough to keep the speed constant. Fly at an oblique angle to the battle and turn towards it when you're at a competitive altitude. In past videos I've used WEP more aggressively to burst climb, using all the speed the plane's carrying to gain altitude very quickly while the WEP's in effect. And then while it recovers I fly level to let the plane accelerate before activating WEP again. And this works well for some planes with fast acceleration, but with many it's less efficient, with long downtime between burst climbs. I recommend the more sustained approach instead. Of course, if you're playing in RB or SB, you won't be using WEP as it will damage your engine. So moving on, let's look at some very common energy-based air combat manoeuvres or ACMs, starting with the Immelman. To perform this manoeuvre you lift the nose into a loop, and then at the top you'll level out, and then you're facing the opposite direction. Obviously you need to be travelling fast enough to make the climb without stalling. A split S is the opposite. You roll the plane over, and then use the elevators to drop down into an inverted loop, levelling out at the bottom. Both of these can be used to turn in any direction you like, simply by rolling the plane while it's vertical. I'll demonstrate this with another Immelman. Ok, I'm now going to roll the plane, and then use the elevators to exit the climb and level out on my new heading. And I may as well do the same in a split S. Now roll, and then level out. These are very useful manoeuvres as they turn your plane with minimal loss of energy. Next I'll show you the move that World War One Ace Max Immelman invented, and what is now called the Hammerhead. I'm putting the plane into a steep climb and waiting until I'm almost about to stall. And then using the rudder key I'll flip the plane over into a dive. This has direct application in an attack called the rope dope which I'll discuss later in the video. For the sake of completeness I'll also show you the wing over. It's very similar to the hammerhead, but the difference is that you needn't reach stall speed before ruddering the plane over into a dive. In fact, you could do this from level flight if you wish, to simply turning the plane on its side and then ruddering it down. So these are some easy energy related manoeuvres that are much more efficient than changing direction by turning horizontally. Spend time practicing them and they'll soon become second nature. Ok, now I'm going to look at several energy related attack manoeuvres, first explaining the theory and then demonstrating them in battle. So this is the first tactic I want to show you. It's known uh, in the War Thunder community as Boom and Zoom, um, although I think it's, it's probably just more easily described as a hit and run attack. In this case our ace pilot is up here, he's worked hard to gain himself an altitude advantage, his target is down low. I'm going to use that altitude advantage to dive and to zoom onto our target. And then after making an attacking pass, I'm not going to hang around and turn fight him, I'm just going to use my speed to extend away to safety and climb back to my starting altitude. You can also perform this attack from a lower altitude, or less of an altitude advantage, if your speed difference is significant. If I'm approaching at 500 km an hour and he's travelling at 200, I can make this attack uh, without having to have an altitude advantage in the first place. But most of the time, we'll be using this as a means of diving onto a target. Of course, our opponent, if they're clever, can easily evade this attack by turning hard or performing a split S, that is uh, rolling underneath and, and diving into a loop, um, and therefore get out from underneath the attack. Because we're approaching at such high speed, we can't manoeuvre to follow them, unless we slow down, and that defeats the whole purpose of uh, trying to energy fight in the first place. So this attack can be effective if the target is slow enough to be able to, uh, to be unable to avoid us, or is unaware of our approach. Let's look at some examples. 
The BF-110C4 is a superb plane for practicing the boom and zoom, and this is a very straightforward example. I've chosen the Spitfire down there as my target. I'm diving directly from above, I get my wings aligned to his flight heading and then strike at mid-range, after which I extend away and use my speed to climb back to my starting altitude, always checking behind in case I've picked up an attacker. It's a very simple routine that you can practice over and over again. In this next example my approach is not as steep, but I still build up a lot of speed as I run down this Beaufort, and that qualifies it as a boom and zoom attack. He turns across my line of approach, and while I angle my wings enough to get some shots away, I refuse to follow him horizontally. Instead I'll pull the plane up sharply into what's known as a high yo-yo, making sure there's no other enemies around and then I'll use that altitude to once again dive into a second boom and zoom attack. Here's an even more shallow attack where I'll end up near 500 km an hour on the approach. There's an SPD off to the right hand side, but the P-36 is my main target. Now I'm going to fail to hit him when he breaks, so once again I'll pull up into a high yo-yo, and that gives me the opportunity to assess the situation. And no one's attacking the SPD, so I'm going to switch on to him and use that altitude to accelerate, close in, and get the kill. Why would you turn fight when your plane can do this instead? This is a more traditional attack from above, except there's two planes down there. And when that's the case, always choose the back marker, in this case the PBY. Not only does that protect you from coming under attack if that rear plane's a fighter, it also lets you switch on to the other planes in front after you've engaged your primary target, provided you don't have to turn too sharply to get a firing solution. And as always, take every opportunity you, you can to look around. But it's one thing to do this in a heavy fighter with devastating weaponry like this 110. You can't do this in a biplane. Or can you? Let's take a look. This is the Italian CR-42 Falco, which, despite receiving an excellent new flight model in patch 1.41, is still the worst turning biplane in the game. That doesn't matter one bit when I can use it like this. There's no reason why you can't learn to energy fight very early in Tier 1. And provided your engine's okay, it doesn't matter if you've taken some damage. My Kitty Hawk here is pretty chewed up, and I'd struggle to turn fight with it but I can still make diving attacks. And as you can see, domination games create awesome opportunities for repeated boom and zoom tactics. A couple more examples before I move on. Here the mother of all kill trains had formed, with most of the enemy ch team chasing one BF-109. And I'm going to choose a target at the end of the queue, hopefully one travelling nice and slow. Always go for the easiest plane to shoot down. Note that with most of these attacks the target has no idea they're in danger until it's too late, and if they survive it, they have no way to strike back. That's what makes it so effective. Also I can't stress it enough, be careful with your zoom climb. It's when you're at most at risk from another attacker swooping at you while you're climbing and low on energy. Here's a target who's aware of me and looking to dodge my diving attacks. It's a good example of both how to fly as the aggressor and also as the, def as the defender if you're under attack. Note how he starts to turn under my approach and I immediately abort and start my zoom climb. And by the way, if you have annotations on, you'll now see links to more Boom and Zoom examples from some of my other videos. This next one is known as the rope dope In this case, we're both climbing. Uh, the attacker is hot on my heels, uh, probably yammering away, with, uh, away at me with his uh, guns. However, when I look back at him, I see that my speed is much greater than his. Probably because I'm, I'm in a zoom climb after a diving attack and he's just tried to helicopter and follow me without any energy to begin with. So knowing this, it's really quite simple. All I need to do is keep my speed up as much as I can and continue my climb. 
He will also try and continue his climb to follow me and keep guns on me, and as soon as I see, looking back at him as close as I can, as soon as I see any indication that his plane is starting to stall, uh, through the white condensation near the wings or through the nose beginning to dip, I can then turn my plane over, using either rudder or elevator keys, whichever turns it quickest, and drop down on top of him and finish him off. Let's look at some examples. This begins with an unsuccessful diving attack on a Heinkel 112A0, and yes this is footage from an old video I made on the BF-110. Ok, he's ducked under my guns and I'm not going to follow his turn, but instead I'll use my speed to climb. Looking back I can see him chasing me, but falling behind, as he lost speed by turning. He peppers away for a while, which slows him down further, and then his nose drops as he stalls. I rudder over, and the rest is easy. A stalled plane is helpless. He can't shoot back, he can't dodge, he can't dive away, and he's the simplest of targets to aim at. And that's why getting people to stall is so effective. Another example from an older video, this time with the Heinkel uh, 112B0. I'm performing a high speed diving pass through this furball, hoping for a target to cross my sights. It doesn't happen as they're all moving at uh, poor angles for a flying solution. So I'm going to extend away and zoom climb. And looking back I see a 112A0 is helicoptering after me, and there's no way he has the energy to keep up. So after waiting uh, to let him exhaust his speed I'm going to rudder over for an easy kill. Notice he's stopped firing now because his plane has stalled. He can no longer bring his guns to bear. And you can see the aiming reticle showing his nose has dropped. Anyway, as I climb out of this dive, I notice that I've attracted an A5M4 trying to reach me from below. And there he is. And with more time on my hands, I can afford to loop over using the elevators, which gives me a better attack angle. And that's two Rapidaps for the price of one. Now if I'd stayed to turn fight in the furball, I'd be dead right now, with no kills probably to show for it. Not only is it safer fighting this way, it really does feel more satisfying and memorable. However, Rapidopes are rarely that clear cut. You'll more commonly see situations like this next, next example. I begin with a high speed hit and run attack that provides a neat kill on a P-36. Now as I extend and climb away, I come under fire from a helicoptering I-16 below me. I don't want to extend so far as to leave him behind, so I'm going to rudder over immediately. He hasn't stalled, probably because the Ki-43 distracted him, but nonetheless he's now a prime target. Now that's not strictly speaking a rope dope but it's close enough. A variant on this tactic is to cross above a climbing attacker. This encourages them to lift their nose trying to get guns on you and stall their plane as a result. Now I know I could have taken this Stuka B2 head on, but let's imagine it's a cannon equipped D5 instead. Now I've used this to good effect on many occasions, including a couple in my boomerang video, which you'll now see links to if your annotations are turned on. This next one's a bit more subtle. Here the attacking plane is a bit lower than me, but not a huge amount lower. He's also approaching at a pretty good speed. I'm about uh, two to three kilometers away, um, close enough that I can't really hope to just turn and run away from him. Uh, he will catch me and get guns on me if I do, nor can I try to just climb, because my height altitude difference is not enough. So, not wanting to give up my height altitude and just dive away, I would rather try this tactic here, and that is I go into a fake head-on. He sees that and thinks, great, I'm going to get guns on this guy, but then just outside gun's range I'm going to lift up into a climb. As he tries to follow, because he has uh, less energy to begin with, whereas I've gained speed from that uh, shallow dive into the fake head-on, I'm able to maintain this climb much faster, much further than he is. He will stall out, and that enables me to turn my plane over, drop down, and attack him as he's stalled and hanging motionless in the air. 
Of course, if he was a smarter pilot, he would not have bought the fake head-on, uh, followed by my climb. As soon as I began to climb away, he would have realised that his speed was too low, realised the trap into which he was being drawn, and instead dived away into a shallow yo-yo uh, in order to gain his own energy back and then try to attack again uh, from a better vantage point. Right, so in this example I'm flying the first MiG-315 and I'm approaching an apparent head-on with a P-36 over which I have a slight altitude advantage. I actually hold a little too long in the head-on to ensure he's committed and then break upwards using WEP. The P-36 is far more manoeuvrable than the MiG, so I'm relying purely on this energy tactic as there's no way I could outturn that enemy plane. Over the loop I can see he's very close to stalling as he tries to follow me, so his turning advantage is gone and it's a simple matter of finishing him off as he hangs in the air. In the distance an I-16 is approaching for a head-on which I don't want to take, in case he's carrying rockets, so I employ the same strategy. I'm going to lift up well outside of firing range this time and spend a little while trot climbing to try and exhaust his speed. He's firing at me at extreme range stops so I feel safe to turn over and engage. Only to find he still has a bit more energy than I thought and we end up in a head-on after all. Now it works out okay but I probably should have climbed just a little longer and turned it into a rope dope And this time flying the MiG-315BK against another I-16. On this occasion I give the opponent too much respect and as a result he's able to recover from his stall before I can bring my guns to bear and that lets him duck away from my attack. So I climb again and this time I'm attempting a normal rope dope hoping to drag him up behind me and, then, and stall him out that way. But I have a bit too much distance on him and so I'm unable to capitalise when he does stall, and I have to be content with uh, just chasing him down off altitude. It really does take practice to get the feel for when it's safe to turn and attack, and when you need to keep on climbing. In this case I erred on the side of caution, but at the very least, at the very least I avoided a head-on, and stopped him from initiating a turn fight, which I'd have certainly lost. Back in the first MiG again. I'm shamelessly beating up on biplanes in this battle, but I have an AI pilot called Harry following me everywhere I go. He's damaged my tail too, so I've decided I need to deal with him. I gain a little separation and then turn to engage him in a false head-on. There he is. As you'll see, even the AI pilot, with his boosted flight model, is unable to climb and follow me. He stalls out, and he's easily dispatched. This next one is the climbing spiral, and it starts in a similar position uh, to the rope dope except this time the enemy is not significantly slower than me. And if I just keep climbing, I've got no guarantee that I will stall uh, after he does. I might stall first, in which case I'm totally dead. So I need to firstly keep my speed as high as I can, and secondly do something to avoid his guns. And the way to do that is to turn my plane into a climbing spiral, by which means I, I, I'm not going to go up straight, I'm going to go up in a bit more of a gentler angle and turn the plane as I do so. It takes a bit of practice to do it right, particularly as I then have to look back down at him and see what he's doing. Because the moment he begins to stall, which is what I'm of course trying to get him to do, I need to then react immediately, turn over and finish him off. So that's basically the climbing spiral there, as you can see. And if he buys into it, this is why it will work. He will try to get guns on me because he's getting closer and closer all the time and he's trying to climb and turn much more aggressively than what I am and that will of course exhaust his energy faster. So he will therefore stall quicker provided he hasn't of course succeeded in getting guns on me. You're running a risk with this as you are in most energy attacks um, and because he stalls first I can then drop down and execute the coup de grace. 
once again in the first MiG-315. It really is a superb energy fighter with its powerful engine, great acceleration, energy retention and climb rate. And yes, it has a lousy turn speed, but when you fly it properly, that just doesn't matter much. I've been caught here by an MC-200, which is a far more agile plane, though not as powerful. So immediately I'm going to enter a series of loops, hoping to exploit his deficiencies as an energy fighter and stall him out. And as this goes on, you'll see that although he was struggling a little, he was able to keep turning inside my wide looping circle and avoid stalling. So as it went on, it became obvious that I'd have to do a bit more than this if I hoped to defeat him. Here I've exited the bottom of my loop while he's at the top of his, so I'm clearly starting to gain an advantage. And on my next, loop, uh, my next loop, I'll roll the plane while holding the up elevator to make it spiral, I climb in a spiral instead of looping. My aim is to keep the cockpit facing upwards, which is the key to maintaining the spiral while I look down at my opponent. He can't get guns on me now, so I've succeeded in stalling him out, and it's time to, 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 to turn defence into attack. I didn't manage to finish him off in that pass, but destroyed his elevators, which forced him to dive away, and eventually hit the ground. So look no further for evidence that a slow-turning energy fighter can easily defeat a more agile but less powerful opponent. And it goes without saying that if I'd fought him by turning horizontally, I would certainly have died. I've actually posted the next segment twice before, once in its own video and again as part of my ki 61 Hay tutorial. And the plane I'm flying is a poor turner with a far weaker engine than my opponent's Griffin Spitfire. All I have in my favour is my slight altitude advantage. Now he's easily followed me up out of my fake head on, and I'm taking damage so I enter the climbing spiral. And as a result he stalls out, while I've retained enough speed to slowly turn and get the kill. So we've looked at how to use the climbing spiral as an offensive weapon, but that's not its only application. Here I'm running for my life, with a Fogel of 190 on my tail, and realising that help is close by, I break sharply upwards and immediately start the spiral. He's unable to get guns on me, and now he's an easy target for my friends to finish off. Now I don't know which of us would have stalled first, but in this case, it didn't matter. Lastly, an example of how not to perform the climbing spiral. I have an altitude advantage over the chasing Ki-10, and I try to initiate the fake head-on, followed by the spiral. In all honesty, my guns were better than his, and I could have just risked uh, continuing the simple head-on, but I instinctively avoid those whenever possible. And my mistake was rolling the plane too far there, and not keeping the cockpit pointing upwards. And by going belly up there, instead, of, instead the plane exited the climb, and I found myself in a horizontal turning battle, one I was not going to win. My energy advantage was gone, so I had no option but to dive away. This next one's a bit more subtle. Um, similar to the fake head-on, except at this time I'm travelling away from the opponent, and will assume that I'm close enough that I haven't got space to actually turn and get guns on him, or to manoeuvre in any way without him closing quickly. So what I want to do to turn this situation to my advantage is to start to turn very, very slowly as I climb, and then gradually increase the speed of my turn, all the while continuing to climb and using WEP to keep my speed as high as I possibly can. What will happen then, and it's hard to show in this diagram which is side on, and I need a mix of both side on and top down in order to show this properly, but what will happen is he will try to as he sees that the range narrowing as I start to turn, he will think he's going to get guns on me. And so he will try to follow the turn uh, much more sharply. And as he's climbing and trying to turn more sharply in order to get that gun solution, it will pull his plane into a stall. I have two examples of this, with the second being a little clearer than the first. 
Uh, my Yak 1B has an energy advantage over a climbing opponent in a Hellcat, and I go for a diving attack which fails to finish him off, because I approached him from the side rather than from behind. So as I extend away I'm going to initiate the climbing pursuit tactic. I open up a decent gap, but I don't want him to feel like he has no chance, give up and dive away. So I'm going to turn slightly to the left as I climb, and then gradually increase the turn. Just watch the range and you'll see it beginning to drop, which is what's keeping the enemy interested. However, to follow me he's having to both climb and turn sharply, which is exhausting his energy. Eventually there he's stalled, and this time I get the kill. Now remember the I-15 that ducked under my boom and zoom earlier. Let's continue where we left off with me extending away. This time I'll turn to the right and gradually tighten my turn, keeping my speed well above my stall limits and allowing him to think that he can get a shot at me. I'm just going to tighten the turn little by little and you can see the distance closing. Now he manages to plink away from long range, and then his firing stops as he stalls, and his nose drops. He could dodge my boom and zoom attack before, but he can't dodge now. This is simply using people's greed for the kill against them. If he'd watched his speed falling and realised his danger, he could have dived away before it was too late. Now of course in the heat of battle these tactics can intermingle with each other and everything become a little blurred, but it's important to understand these manoeuvres, how to perform them and why they work, as they're tools at your disposal, ready to employ depending on the situation. You'll also recognise when someone's using them against you, and you'll know how to avoid them. I'll just show you two more dogfights. In this battle I've tangled with that enemy pilot twice already, succeeding in shooting him down both times, so I knew he'd come looking for me after he respawned. And by the way, I mean no disrespect to this pilot. He actually flew very well, indeed, throughout this battle. So I have an altitude advantage and I'm using it to attempt a boom and zoom attack. He'll successfully dodge, although he didn't turn as tightly as he might have done and that lets me land a few hits. I'm not hanging around to dogfight, I have a superior energy, and I mean to keep it that way rather than fight on level terms, so I'm zoom climbing. And as I do so, I can see him firing away at long range, so I know he's not going to give up. Now for a second boom and zoom. And this really does show how difficult it can be to attack this way against an opponent who's aware of you and turns hard to duck under your gunfire. This time I won't climb as sharply on the zoom, as I'm making sure I've extended out of range first. He's still following aggressively, so I decide to try to use that to get him to stall. And this is looking like your typical rope dope so far. But then I'll turn that into a half loop, and then risk a fake head on, pulling up immediately to cross the line of his gunfire and make him stand on end to try to follow me. He can't, he's stalled out in his eagerness to get the kill and that is his undoing. A stalled plane's a helpless plane. One more example with the MiG-315. This starts with my boom and zooming a dauntless dive bomber. Unfortunately my guns don't inflict any real damage and then he decides to take me on. Now the Dauntless is quite a good turner, with twin 50 cals that could rip me apart, but unlike the MC200 earlier, he can't sustain a looping battle for very long, and he'll eventually stall on a climb. So as this video draws to a close, I'm aware there's more that I haven't shown you, especially the use of low yo-yos to gain speed, close in on opponents and attack them from underneath. I also haven't discussed the lag displacement attack, although I did perform one in the BF-110 uh, during the boom and zoom attacks. Now I've used both these manoeuvres in past videos, and if I have time to find examples and link to them here, 
using annotations, I'll do so. But the main things to take away from this video are the need to climb and to maintain your speed at all times. Don't fritter it away with horizontal turns. Don't hang around to dogfight when you have an energy advantage. Use Immelmans to turn as that converts your speed back into altitude. And yes, I've provided you with plenty of tactics here to learn and master. By the way, if anyone tries to tell you that energy fighting doesn't work in arcade, well, now you know the truth. It not only works, it's absolutely deadly once you get the hang of it. I should also mention that if you don't immediately understand the tactics I used here, I encourage you to go back and watch them again. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. The beauty of these tactics is they don't require you to have fast reflexes or precision aiming skills, or to fly the fastest turning plane. If an old bloke like me flying with an Australian ping can pull these things off, anyone can do it. In the next video in the series, I'm going to have a look at the other side of the coin. Now we've seen how to use an energy advantage to attack an opponent, so let's look at situations where an opponent's superior energy state can be used to turn the tables against them. That's what's coming up next, though it may take a little while to put together. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the skies.